Hi everyone, thank you for joining today. My name is Dan Sanford. Today I'll be going over how VMware IT, we manage all of our deployments for Macs with inside of VMware and how we're using it today with Workspace ONE. So a little about, about me, um, I'm a Mac enthusiast. I started working at Apple back in 2008. Um, I've always loved Apple computers, started off in high school working on them. Um, eventually led me to a job at AirWatch where I was running Mac management. AirWatch got acquired by VMware, and not long after that, I became our IT manager for everything Apple-related. And that's how we manage all of our Apple devices today. It kind of all goes to me. Cool. So to talk about a little bit of where we are, I want to first show you what VMware is and where we're kind of managing our devices. So today, we do have a bunch of mobile devices inside of VMware, and that's both iOS and Android. We are about 75% iOS is about 25% Android. Um, most of the iOS devices we do have are bring your own device. So this will be employee owned devices inside of our Workspace ONE environment. Now, if I look at desktops, we're about 50% 50, 50 Windows, 48% Mac, and 2% Linux. Now on the Mac front, we did acquire Carbon Black and Pivotal recently where they have a large Mac user base and we will see this number shift very soon um, inside of our environment. So talking about Macs a little bit further, here at VMware, we do offer Mac as a choice. So what that means to our colleagues is when they're starting with VMware, they can choose their hardware and what works best for them. And out of that, we have about 15,000 people have chosen to use the Macs today inside of VMware. And that's a big number from where we first started. So before we started working with Workspace ONE, we were deploying our computers through an old archaic method. We were using things like thumb drive imaging, where we would sit there and basically take a fresh computer out of the box, install what programs we wanted, change the background picture, order the dock around, and then we would image it. When I'm done imaging that device, I would then save that thumb drive image, which takes about like two days to create and deployed upon 32 servers globally around VMware. Now those 32 servers, we also had to keep up to date, make sure that they were working properly. Um, and it would take about five days just to get those images moved across the company. We didn't use any type of application management when we were doing this. So basically whatever came inside of those images, we were relying on the third party auto updaters to work on the computers. We didn't have any profiles or any managed settings. Whatever we set as the default in the image is what was on there, but the colleague could change it to whatever they wanted. We were also using a third-party tool to bind our computers to Active Directory. And that tool, we ran into a lot of issues. When we were using that tool, if Apple came up with a new update, it would typically break that third-party binding tool and brick the computer. And I don't mean like brick in a normal way. I mean brick as you can't even get to the Apple logo to get back into your computer, like your data is gone. So we had really negative effects with that. The other thing is we were also managing certificates in-house with a script or server. Most of the time it would work, but we ran into a lot of reliability issues. Um, and it also became a hassle to kind of maintain. So this kind of moved us into, let's start using our own product or our own tool. Workspace ONE had really developed on the Mac front, and that's when we decided to start using it and invest heavily into the Mac front. As you can see, we started our deployment back in January of 2018. When we first started this, it was a pilot with just an IT only. If you see the very first numbers here in January, you can see we had about 7,800 Macs in our environment that we at least knew of. A lot of, of our folks, because they didn't like the software we were deploying on our computers, they would take the laptop from us, wipe it, and then they would re-image it with blank, nothing on the computer, and then they would use the computer that way without any of our security tools. When we started deploying with Workspace ONE, a lot of our colleagues started seeing the benefit from what the things that we started giving them, which I will be discussing here in a minute. But those benefits, you can see the numbers rose as we got all the way through August. Those 3,000 Macs that were unmanaged, they started enrolling on their own to get those added benefits. I think that's a big key to the story here. 
So when we moved away from, when we started moving to Workspace ONE and away from the whole imaging system, we removed some issues that we had. First of all, when we were bound to Active Directory, we would have these terrible login keychain prompts. And they would always come up anytime any of our colleagues would change the password with Active Directory. Other issues we had as well is if our colleagues went to lunch and came back, when they would type in their password, it would actually shake as if the password was incorrect. But the reason why that was happening is the computers cannot reach back out to our domain servers to actually authenticate against their Active Directory credentials, and it would time out. One of the last issue is we also, it was on Apple's end, was there was keychain issues or file vault issues. So when you would change your password, the file vault password would not update and you would have to type in a, your old password and then your new password just to get into the computer. And it was very complicated and confusing for our colleagues. So we did away with all of this. We went from Active Directory to local user accounts and we added Enterprise Connect, which is an Apple product and is now built into the macOS Catalina operating system. But what we did with this, this now allows us to bind the computers to Active Directory in a sense, just through an application by using a local user account. So this gave us everything that we needed from the AD perspective, and we could keep the password in sync. This also got rid of the Active Directory prompts with the keychain prompts, and also does provide a Kerberos ticket for authentication still. So there's a lot of benefits for us using this. Also now using Workspace ONE, we now have the benefit of delivering applications and updating those applications. Because that's, that's a huge win for us as now we can update vulnerabilities to do like other products that we're using. We also gain the ability to do reporting. And with our intelligence program or reporting, we now have, I can see what versions we're installing across the platforms. I can also see the installation dates. And I can get live updates and dashboards I can give to our managers. So what, is a, what does the experience look like from VMware side? So when we have a new hire, or if it's someone is getting a refreshed computer, there's a couple of different ways we do this. This is the process from start to finish. If you're a new hire, your manager will order the device for you. But if you are already a VMware employee, you can go ahead and order the device yourself. So if you are a new employee, you'll actually place the order through our ticketing system. It will then go to logistics where they will go ahead and create the PO and place the order. Once that order is placed, the reseller will add a NASA tag on VMware's behalf. And we also have a set of pamphlet that we include either in the box or instead of a pamphlet, we actually enclose the box inside of a, a case. And I'll show that here in a second. Once the reseller is done, they ship the Mac directly to the colleague and the colleague receives the computer and they go through the whole entire self-service portal on their own. The whole setup is not done by IT. So this is actually direct from factory to, the, uh, to our colleague's hands. This is where our colleague receives. So here's a box that already has welcome to VMware. Your laptop is being managed by Workspace ONE. On the back, when they're going through the Apple set, set, setup steps, it has kind of steps to walk their colleagues through what they'll be doing, how, select your language, select your keyboard, that kind of thing. To do all this, we're using Apple Business Manager behind the scenes. So with every reseller, we are bound with uh, them to connect our computers to Apple Business Manager using device enrollment program by Apple. And that DP then ties it into our Workspace ONE instance to kind of give this seamless experience that you're seeing here today. The whole process of provisioning one of our computers takes about 30 minutes. And what I mean by provisioning, once you go through DP and you've been accepted as this is the Apple Business Manager computer and is owned by VMware, it then ties it into our Workspace ONE instance, which then has a set of, of pro profiles, certificates, applications that we deem necessary on our corporate laptops. And that takes about 30 minutes to install all those products. It's also about six gigs for all the files that we install. And these are the kind of payloads we're doing. So we've got automatic apps that we're doing. That's our standard suite of apps. Some of them are custom scripts and that might help set the printer or change um, templates. And then we also have a bunch of on-demand applications 
through avail available through Intelligent Hub. And this is really important because it allows our colleagues to have that choice of what they think they need to use for themselves and not what is deemed um, pertinent by VMware. And a lot of the dis different custom scripts we're doing are different slides, kind of like the one I'm providing today, printer settings, and even browser configurations to use our root certificates. So here's what we're also deploying from a like, profile perspective. We have our VMware root certificates and our identity certificates. We also have an identity certificate, which will give you access to the VPN, our Wi-Fi, and also single sign-on. Now, single sign-on, we do provide for all three br main browsers. We also do have a kernel extension policy, which whitelists third-party kernel extensions. Some products still have those still available today and should be removing them by the end of this year. But kernel extensions for usually security tools or VPN clients, um, we're able to whitelist all of those. Also something new with Mojave with 1014 were privacy prompts. Now privacy prompt, if you haven't seen those before, is typically, it will say, OSIS script wants to use terminal, which are Apple native prompts. And most colleagues would not know what that means and try to block it when it actually might be used to actually activate a script or change your background picture. As an MDM provider, we're able to also whitelist those prompts inside of Workspace ONE on our Macs. In VMware's environment alone, we had 40 privacy prompts pop up and we were able to whitelist all those so our colleagues don't get confused. To secure our devices, we also have an encryption profile. That encryption profile is important because as soon as it gets installed on the device, it, it forces encryption on the Mac and it will escrow that key back to Workspace ONE. So in case something happens to the device, our colleagues and our administrators are able to help our colleagues um, get back into the computer if they can't log in. We also do four software updates from Apple and we're able to kind of do patch management from this as well. So any type of security updates that come from Apple we're able to force those through with Workspace ONE. Also the Enterprise Connect configuration, that is what allows us to force the password management on it with Active Directory. And we, we, we push that down as well. Anytime there's an event that we have for VMware, either if it's our VMworld event, we can send out Wi-Fi configurations for our employees. So when they take their devices, they automatically connect and they don't have to search for Wi-Fi. We do enforce our screen timeouts on the device as well. So about 20 minutes, if a colleague were to walk away from the computer, it will automatically force it to go into a timeout mode um, and force the password back on the computer. And something I wanted to mention here that's a little different, with Workspace ONE, you can do a lot of things natively in the console, but let's say there's something in the Workspace ONE that you want to create yourself or is not available today. For example, changing the host name. We have a custom set of rules for our host names inside of VMware and how we connect to our devices. And we're able to force that using API calls that will actually talk to a database that we created in-house. And then it will actually move that host name onto the device from the server that we created. It's really cool. And that today is a full picture of everything we're managing here at VMware and how we do it. So today I'd like to say thank you for your time. If you take a screenshot of this QR code, this does take you to my blog for inside of VMware and how we're managing our Macs. Also here you can read our report for our annual IT report and how we're doing here at VMware. And this presentation was brought to you today by VMware on VMware program. If you'd like to talk to us further or have any other questions, please reach out to us in any of these links below. Thank you.